increase the complexity and capacity of their LTE networks on the path to uh, 5G. What impact is that having on the way they plan and operate and deploy their networks? Uh, obviously, the, the migration for, from 4G going into 5G has a, a lot of changes and a lot of demand on, on the network. So uh, a lot of bandwidth implications, obviously bandwidth is going to grow. Uh, things like lower latency is going to be required and higher reliability. So if we look on the front hall piece of the network, and uh, that'll push carriers to go uh, to migrate to architectures like CRAN, uh, and that they're preparing actually today in, in 4G uh, in preparation for 5G. Uh, there's also massive fiber deployment, so to, to service and to have that bandwidth, there's a lot of fiber that will be deployed, and also new technologies, including CIPRI, and then moving even to eCIPRI in the future. Uh, also key to that migration, some of the key issues are interference as well. So the densification of the, of the network today in 4G and even more in 5G increases uh, the occurrence of interference in the network. So that's, that, that's going to be critical. Spectrum is very valuable to the service providers and interference actually reduces uh, the, uh, the spectrum value. So it's important that that is mitigated. Front hall C ran and fiber availability. Uh, what are some of the challenges related to managing interference for those different technologies? Um, obviously, moving to a, mo a more dense network, and as I mentioned, uh, there's more interference. That has a major impact on the cost of maintenance of these these networks. So a lot of a lot more truck rolls. Uh, also, if we're looking for uh, uh, maintenance personnel, it means more cell sites that need to be maintained. Uh, per uh, uh, cell site technician. So it puts a lot of pressure on the maintenance and, and obviously increases the costs. Uh, and often um, the, the, this personnel is unknowingly blind to some of the issues in the network with the current tools that they have. They often don't see some of these interference uh, and PIM issues and even fiber issues in the network. Uh, they, and they also they lack actionable data to actually uh, go out and, and actually fix the problem rather than spend a lot of time troubleshooting. Uh, and the last one I would say is really from a multi-technology uh, uh, support uh, piece where technicians now need to manage multiple things. Fiber is new to them, things like CIPRI, even Ethernet. RF is new to a lot of these, uh, this personnel, so there's a challenge in terms of training as well. So given all those uh, different parallel challenges, what are some best practices that carriers can adopt to face them head on? There's, there's quite a bit. That I would say the most important ones, the first one is really quality of installation of the fiber uh, itself at the base. So if the installation is done properly at the beginning uh, with the right tools, the right methodologies, uh, that brings a, a lot of advantage from day one. Um, also, moving forward when, when you're maintaining the network, uh, tools that allow you to remotely access, so minimizing the truck rolls, being able to uh, see the network from a, a remote capability, and also uh, after that monitoring proactively the network and automatically uh, and detect issues faster before the end customer actually sees them uh, is, is really critical. And after that, even beyond that, if, if you're monitoring and you're getting data, being able to see and understand trends on the network, either it's from a geographical uh, region specifically or uh, um, in, in different areas of, of the network, then if you see trends, then you can be, again, proactive in upgrading the network or changing the network to make sure that issues don't occur. And so if those are the best practices, can you tell us a little bit about how Expo is enabling the market to uh, yes, so Expo really provide provides tools that are both for on-site testing and troubleshooting as, as well as remote uh, troubleshooting and monitoring. So uh, tools that uh, if, you, if you're looking at on-site that can emulate uh, the BBU or the RRH, uh, tools that can characterize the fiber and then once installation is complete uh, we provide tools that can uh, offer remote monitoring uh, and also important that tools that can scale with the network. So you know obviously uh, CRAN side 
sites are going to be uh, smaller uh, to, at the beginning, but they're going to ramp up and have a lot of BBUs uh, in the same location. So a tool that can scale for monitoring these types of sites is very important. And lastly, uh, Expo really uses um, uh, our 30-year expertise as, as really a trusted advisor to our, our customers. And, and we often provide training on best practices for testing and also on technology. So we work very closely with our customers.